Friends of a 20-year-old from Frankfurt who had his skull fractured during a fight in Bowling Green are raising money to help his family. A southern Kentucky family is waiting for justice. Now they hope a reward will help lead them to a driver who hit and killed a 10-year-old boy. Changes on campus here at UK mean changes for the Big Blue Madness ticket distribution. I'll explain coming up. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. A Frankfurt man is in critical condition. Tonight, he's in an induced coma after a fight near a college campus. That brawl happened in Bowling Green last week near Western Kentucky University. Corey Johnson was visiting friends at the school. He was airlifted to UK hospital with serious head injuries. Johnson's friends are now helping his family while they stay at his bedside. WKYT's Victor Puente has our top story at 6. Corey Johnson's friends say he helped his mother pay the bills. So now that she's by his side while he's in the hospital, they're raising money to help them. Friday night, Johnson was with a group of friends from Frankfurt who went to Bowling Green to visit another friend at Western Kentucky University. Police say late that night he was attacked by several people near a fraternity house on Center Street. And then after he was tackled, it, it looks as though he was knocked unconscious. And then two other people came over and continued to, to beat him in the head while he was unconscious. They didn't know how bad his injuries were until he was flown to Lexington. One of his co-workers who was in Bowling Green said Johnson has a big heart and went out of his way to help people. I mean, it was just sickening. I mean, I, I don't really know how to also explain it. They've started a GoFundMe campaign to help his family while he's in the hospital. He's listed in critical condition, but Peevler says they've gotten word he's improving. Keep praying, keep your thumbs up for him, because we're not giving up. I know he's not giving up. He's strong. He's going to fight, and he's going to come back, and we're going to have him back in our lives as soon as possible. According to WKU's student newspaper, there is a video of that fight that police are reviewing to try to identify suspects. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Bowling Green police have said they plan on charging the people responsible with assault. So far, there have not been any arrest. It's been three months since a 10-year-old boy died in a hit and run in Pulaski County. Stanley Turner was hit on Rock Lick Creek Road near his grandfather's farm. Police still have few leads in the search for the driver. Now a reward for information has been started. WKYT's Monique Blair is in Pulaski County and just talked to Turner's mother. Stanley Turner grew up here, attending the Vault Ridge Church of Christ every single Sunday. He was known in this community as a carefree, happy little boy. But for three months now, his family has wanted answers. So tonight, his mom is pleading for whoever hit and killed her son to come forward. The night of June 20th, around 7.30, Stanley Turner was playing near Rock Lick Creek Road when he was hit by a car. Turner died from his injuries, and the driver of the car never stopped. Turner's mom, Katrina Mosley, says the past three months have been indescribably difficult. But now she hopes with the help of a $2,000 reward that was raised with the help of the community that someone who knows something will come forward so that she and her family can finally get some closure. I believe whoever, somebody somewhere knows something, and um, I just want somebody to come forward, as I believe any family would want somebody to come forward, because we're still having a hard time understanding how anybody could just leave a 10-year-old little boy laying in the middle of the road. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office tells me they have a detective who works this case every single day, but at this point they are simply asking for the public's help. If you or you may know someone who was driving on Rock Lake Creek Road the night of June 20th, you are asked to call the sheriff's office. In Pulaski County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Now, the sheriff's office is still looking for a blue hatchback passenger car that may have Ohio plates. Deputies say that several witnesses have claimed to have seen a car matching that description driving down Rock Lick Creek Road the night the young boy was hit. A woman murdered 47 years ago in eastern Kentucky has finally been identified. State police say the victim is Sanja K. Blair Adams. Her body was found along Little Shepherd Trail in Harlan County in June of 1969. Adams' body was exhumed last year after state police were contacted by a woman believing the body may be her mother. 
DNA tests were run. This month, the results confirmed the identity. Adams was from Letcher County. Police hope the new information will generate new leads in that investigation. Lexington police told us today they still need tips from the public in the murder of a pregnant woman. Mariah Coleman died two weeks ago after she was hit by a stray bullet while walking her dog on Winburn Drive. Last night, here at 11, we told you about some newly released information on that case, including a description of a man seen running from the area the night of the shooting. Police are looking for a young black man with dreadlocks and a cast on his arms. He's not considered a suspect. Police just want to see if he has information about the shooting. A Lexington man is in the hospital tonight after being shot in the head. Police believe it was an accidental shooting. It happened this afternoon at a home on Dick's Drive. Police say two men were looking at a gun and apparently did not think it was loaded when it went off. Police say the victim was conscious at the scene and talking to paramedics. So far, no one has been charged. Seven former clients of Eric Kahn appeared in federal court today in hopes of getting their disability benefits back. Kahn is accused of using fraudulent information to secure benefits for his clients. The Social Security Administration re examined all of Kahn's clients to see if they would still be eligible for benefits. The seven in court today lost their benefits. The attorney for the seven says the hearings held by the Social Security Administration are unfair. You have hearings where you can't challenge the evidence. In my opinion, that's not, a, that's not a hearing. Attorneys for the Social Security Administration say they are following the law and the hearings are adequate. The judge will make a ruling on whether the hearings are constitutional soon. Governor Matt Bevin's office says Kentucky has joined in on a lawsuit challenging new federal overtime rules. Kentucky and 21 other states filed a complaint in federal court challenging the United States Department of Labor's new overtime rule. The new regulations go into effect in December and will make more Americans eligible for overtime pay. The governor's office says the new rule needs congressional authorization. He also says that it will force Kentucky and many other state and local governments to substantially increase their their employment cost. If you like sunshine and warm temperatures, the last full day of summer didn't disappoint. But what about that first day of fall? Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's here in the First Alert Weather Center with a look at that. Hey, Chris. Yeah, fall officially arrives tomorrow morning. I believe right at 10:21. Uh, you're not going to be able to tell it though by the actual weather, Sam. We're going to continue with this summertime pattern even into the first few days of. Fall. We look outside right now. Good looking sky over top of Hamburg Pavilion. Nothing to worry about. Those shadows getting a little longer as the sun gets lower and lower. Temperatures mainly low and mid 80s across most of central and eastern Kentucky right now. It's a warm evening, goes without saying, right until sundown. We're into the upper 70s to around 80. Post sundown, dry air in place. That thermometer will drop quickly. 71 by 9 o'clock and a partly cloudy sky by 11. 65 degrees. Overall, it's still going to feel very nice. No humidity to speak of. Defender Radar Network has a clean sky across the bluegrass state. A little cloud cover, though, trying to creep into the picture from parts of Illinois and Indiana. But that area of high pressure that is on top of the Mississippi Valley continues to go to work on the bluegrass state. And that is continuing to keep us on the steamy side of things. Summertime rolls on as it feels like early August. To start out the next season, that of course is fall. Changes show up next week, and we will detail those when I come back here, guys, in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. You can get a jump start in protecting yourself from the flu starting today. The Lexington Fayette County Health Department on Newtown Pike is now offering flu shots a couple of weeks earlier than originally planned. And that's because there have been 10 confirmed flu cases in Kentucky, including one in Fayette County. The health department says the flu typically doesn't show up until October or November. It's almost now the flu season is almost running year round. So, because last year we saw it from October and November into April and May. So, that's a very brief break from the flu. No appointment is necessary to get the shot at the health department, and the cost is $30. The department will do its annual free flu shot event on October 20th. Okay, UK basketball fans, the wait's finally over. Blue, Big Blue Madness just three weeks away. Yeah, but before the team debuts, there is madness just trying to get a ticket in to rep for that first practice. And this year, it may be even tougher if you want to camp out. WKYT Sean Moody explains the changes. With the last full day of summer upon us, basketball season isn't all that far away. It won't be long before fans start lining up outside Memorial Coliseum, but with all the construction going on this year, things will be a little bit different. 
Every year, the diehards line up dark and early to get those first basketball tickets of the season. And it's maybe the best demonstration of what our fans are all about. Guy Ramsey with UK Athletics says things are going to look a little different this year, though. In past years, those tents would surround Memorial Coliseum. There are lines of tents right here, all down this area, and then down this side of Memorial Coliseum right there and then around the side up to the front as well. This year it's just going to change where the camping is going to move to that side. Part of the reason is that construction right across the street. In past years, there would also be tents over on that lawn. Now the new student center is going up. That also means there are more pedestrians near the Coliseum instead of across the street. But obviously with construction now and campus pedestrian lanes, that's just not really an option anymore. That means less room for big blue ticket hunters. We had about 585 tents set up last year. There looks to be a room for about 400, but obviously once we get into it and we have to have things figured out, that's when we'll know exactly what it looks like. Now you can stay home and take your chances on Ticketmaster. Even if you're not part of the campout, you can still see what's going on out here online. And it's going to be a three-hour live radio and online live stream that just sort of shows what the campout's all about. So if you're not able to be at the campout, that's a good way to feel like you're there is to watch that show on UKAthletics.com. A Big Blue Madness itself is a couple of weeks after the ticket distribution. It'll be October 14th at 7 p.m. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. And we know you're excited, but UK Athletics has asked people to line up for camping no earlier than 5 a.m. on Wednesday, September 28th. This year's version of the Wildcats won't be the only thing to make a debut at Madness. Rupp Arena posted this video on its Facebook page this afternoon. The court has been sanded and repainted with a new design. That new look will be revealed for Big Blue Madness. Now that's pretty cool. Can't wait to see the real thing. A little tease there. <laughs> First responders from several Central Kentucky communities converging on a Lexington Park today. We'll find out why they hope training today will help them if a disaster strikes. His design uh, garnered national attention. A pair of cleats a former Kentucky player wore in the NFL in 12 minutes. Meet the man behind the shoes and how he turned a hobby into a business. It was a pretty big scene. More than 100 police, fire, and EMTs took over Jacobson Park today, and it was all part of a disaster drill. That program is called CSEP, Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program. The goal is to make sure that first responders are ready for a chemical spill at the Bluegrass Army Depot. First responders did a simulation where they practiced decontaminating victims. Having a plan is essential when something of this magnitude takes place and essentially we've got a plan on paper that works great but you actually have to get out and put the rubber to the road and walk through it. And 10 counties participated in the drill earlier today. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hey, it's beautiful out there. It is on the toasty side, though, as we get ready to... Today's the last full day of summer, by the way, at least. According to your calendar, you've got a few more summer days to go through, though. We're getting ready to usher in fall, and this is how the last evening of summer is going out on and it is a very pretty note in what was overall a wet summer up until the past two or three weeks it was also a warm one 87 degrees but look at the humidity it is bone dry you have zero heat index and the humidity is going to continue to remain fairly low over the next several days most areas right now into the low and mid 80s high pressure on top of the mississippi valley helping to keep us high and dry low pressure Yes, I'm still tracking low pressure across the Carolinas. This is what is left of our tropical storm Julia from late last week. Remember the one that formed over top of the Jacksonville area, made its way up the eastern seaboard, and it is still there. And it is throwing up a stop sign to the rest of the weather across the country. So the weather coming at us is hitting a road close sign. The weather road is shut down right now across the Ohio Valley because of this big blocking area of low pressure that is on top of the Carolinas. So the pattern is just stuck. And that means tomorrow, similar to today, 60 to start, near 90 before the day is over. And you know what that means as well? Friday, rubber stamp. Saturday, rubber stamp. It's more of the same. Plenty of sunshine, toasty temperatures. You want to get a little change in here? I'm with you. Let's change it up. Let's get it to feel like fall. Big changes are possible into the first half of next week. Jet stream is likely to take a big dip 
across the Plains states and then slowly press in to the Ohio Valley and into the eastern part of the country. And in a setup like this, you can get a little, uh, actually a fairly hefty cold pool of air aloft that cuts off from the main flow. So the jet stream may leave this area of low pressure just spinning across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. That is a cutoff low. It has nothing to push it along. So next week, the weather may be stuck in place, but with a completely different weather pattern. Now, the models will struggle with the placement and timing of a setup like this, so everything will be fine-tuned as we get closer. But right now, next week may very well turn rainy for a while as much cooler air gets into the picture. Exactly when that happens, odds favor Tuesday, Wednesday, with a chance for some late-day showers and storms on Monday. And that 70 by next Tuesday could, could, depending on the rain amounts, be a little on the optimistic side. But over the next few days, guys, it's all about summer, even as the calendar says it's all about fall. It is a steamy, sizzling September we have rolling on here. I like the alliteration. It's the only thing Keep I, it going, huh? It's the only thing I got to talk about all of this. She, know, she right? said with a glint in her eye. Did by, you... by the way, the not boring hashtag on yeah. Twitter, it's there. Awesome. Right? People are tweeting me, not boring. Not right. boring. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the cat's finishing up practice, and Coach Mark Stoops, Rob, not a happy man. He was not happy at all with the way his team practiced, and Drew Barker is sidelined for this weekend and a whole lot longer. We will hear from the guy who replaced him last Saturday, and we'll get his first start this weekend. Steven Johnson, sports is next. Quarterback Drew Barker will miss a significant amount of time with a back injury. Mark Stoops saying late this afternoon, really within the last 30 minutes, that he will miss three weeks, four weeks, maybe even longer. So that is not good news. And to top it off, Stoops was really unhappy with practice today. He said the defense regressed. He said if it continues, he said his team would continue to play like crap. Now, Steven Johnson will get his first start at quarterback against South Carolina. Johnson showed he could throw the ball last weekend. He completed 17 of 22 passes. Johnson, happy with the way it all went, but he said he expects a lot. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm my own greatest critic. So, I mean, it, I, I want to go 100, 400 um, completions um, and, and have no incompletions at all and uh, execute everything perfectly. I have a perfect pass, but um, it went pretty well, I guess. So it's South Carolina, Saturday at Commonwealth Stadium, 7.30 kick on the SEC Network on Saturday night. A pair of shoes is not only used for jumping higher or running faster, they are a source of self-expression. As Lee K. Howard tells us, one Lexington man has taken that to another level. This has got the fade. When it comes to sneakers, like this logo is probably still got about another hour left. Billy Hobbs' shoe game. You'll have the Bengals logo on that one is on point. I'm 41 years old, so you know I remember when the original Air Jordan 1 came out, and that was kind of my thing. And I've been a sneakerhead ever since. For more than 15 years, he's been taking perfectly good shoes. Like, I love custom. I love just the artwork. And making them even better. Being able to take an old shoe that may be worth nothing to someone to turn it into you know, a masterpiece for somebody. From low tops to high tops and everything in between. A Noah's Ark theme, Air Jordan 5, and it had um, uh, had different animal prints all over, the, all over the whole shoe. He's customized more pairs of kicks than he can count. Yeah, hundreds. I mean, hundreds and hundreds probably. So many shoes that he was able to quit his day job and go full time in his studio. Yeah, I worked for Pepsi Cola for 12 years and uh, actually had gotten to a point in the company where it was where everybody wants to be. And it was a hard decision to make, you know, but it was something where I was working 10 hours a day, eight hours a day at my day job and then coming home and work until midnight doing this. And that's when he traded in Pepsi for painting. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> His shoe art has attracted a who's who of footwear fanatics. So I've done a pair for Coach Cal, um, Willie, um, you know, Tyler. I've had some relationship with Tyler. Uh, Trey Lyle still, he actually sent me a pair of shoes the other day to, to, to get some work done. Uh, Hall of Famer Andre Reed from the Buffalo Bills. Ian Kinsler from the Tigers. Jared Saltalamacchia. Many of the shoes Billy customizes are worn by athletes and then auctioned off to charities. The uh, Team Blake pair that I did for Willie, that was that was awesome just to be a part of that and the auction and raising some money for Cozares. Most recently, a pair of 911 cleats Billy created for Tennessee Titans linebacker Avery Williamson gained national attention. 
when the NFL threatened to fine Williamson for a uniform violation if he wore the custom cleats. I leaked them probably about a month early, not thinking any would, anybody would pick it up. Little did I know that TMZ would pick it up, and then the NFL saw that. The NFL would eventually back off its threat to fine. That, that was kind of a, a bad publicity for them to, to do that. But you don't have to be a pro athlete to lace up a pair of these True Blue Customs. I mean, I do shoes for 12-year-old kids to, you know, 50-year-old men to, you know, whoever. And as long as the sneaker enthusiasts are purchasing, Billy will be painting. I stay busy. I mean, it's, it's non-stop. <laughs> In Lexington. You know, I'm doing something I love, so it's pretty awesome. Lee K. Howard, WKYT. TMZ is reporting that Avery Williamson's 911 cleat sold at auction for $6,600. All of that money will be donated to Operation Warrior Wishes. Sam Amber, back to you. We need a pair of those, don't we? No, I'm honored he's in our community doing yes. that kind of work. That's mm -hmm. great. A final check of your first alert forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, violence erupting in another U.S. city after police fatally shot a black man. Police and people in Charlotte are telling very different stories about what took place.